Okay, next we're going to check out plugins or effects in Reaper. Now in this video, we're going to focus on track effects, which are effects we put on our tracks right here. We could also put effects on our items, but I'm not going to show you that in this video. We'll go over that a little bit later. So the track effects we put on over here are going to affect any items that are on that track. And we could add them right over here on this button. If we click it, it opens up this dialog, showing us all the plugins or effects that are on our system. As you can see, we have a bunch of them. You might have more or less, but Reaper comes with a whole bunch. Now to make it easier to find one, just use the filter down here. So if you want to use an EQ plugin, just type in EQ. And all the plugins that have EQ in their names are going to show up. So it filters it down a bit, or compressor, and it makes it easier to find one for your needs. Now, another way we could organize our plugins is using folders. If we go over here and right click, we can create a new folder. Let's clear the filter. Let's name it EQ. And now we have a folder named EQ. We can use our filter to find our EQ plugins, select them all, and drag them right into here. And we can go through these and delete the ones we don't want. Maybe get rid of the JS ones, just delete them, and they're no longer in this folder. We can make one for compression. and select and drag these over. And now we have a folder just for our compressor plugins. Let's create another one for our favorites. And let's add a few of our favorites. Let's go to the Reaper ones and choose the compressor, the delay, the EQ, the gate, and the reverb. We'll drag these in. And now right in our favorites, we have those plugins. Now there's one other folder I should show you, and it's a newer feature added to Reaper 5. If we create a new folder down here, let's name it Waves, and we can choose this option, Smart Folder. So if we choose that, we can add a filter right here. Let's type in Waves. Now if we hit OK, this folder just has plugins with the name Waves in them. But this folder is a smart folder. Unlike these, which are based on what we drag in, any plugin in our system with the word waves in it is going to automatically be added. So if we install more plugins with the name waves in them, they're going to automatically be added to this folder. We don't have to do it manually. And that's the benefit of a smart folder. So now let's add some plugins to this track. Let's go to our favorites. And let's start off with an EQ. We can double click it. And now this plugin is on this track. We can bypass this plugin by choosing this right here. Now it's bypassed. Or we can do the same thing over here. That's going to bypass this plugin. We can choose presets over here. Or we can make our own by adjusting things over here. But let's add another plugin. Go down here to add. And let's add a compressor. Double click it. Now we have a compressor after the EQ. Now the order of these plugins does matter. So the way it's set up now, it's going to first EQ, then it's going to compress. But we can change that order by dragging it to put the compressor first or back again. Now we could also float our plugins just by double clicking them. And now the EQ is in its own window. Let's do the same thing with our compressor. Let's close this. And now we can see both windows at the same time. Let's close these. 
Now, if we go back over here, notice this button is now green. That lets us know that there's plugins on this track. We can also see it with our tooltips. See how it says effects, re-EQ, and recompressor? And we can open them up either by clicking them or by right-clicking them. Over here, we can add plugins based on that folder. The EQ ones, our compressor, our favorites, or the Waves plugins. And down here are the plugins or effects that are already on the track. Like our EQ, see how it's floating? Or our compressor? So it's a quicker way to get to it directly by right clicking over here instead of choosing it in this window. Now we could also bypass our plugins. If we go over here to this button, if we click it, the effects button turns red, letting us know that the plugins on this track are now bypassed. And we could see that using the tooltips. It says it's bypassed. Click that button again, and now the plugins are back on. We can also delete our plugins right from this button. On the PC, hold on Alt. On the Mac, hold on Option. And click this button, and the plugins are gone. See how it turns gray? And if we open it back up, they're gone. Let's add some more plugins. From our favorites, let's start with an EQ, then a compressor, and then another EQ. And let's adjust these to taste. Let's say for the first EQ, we want to cut off some low end using a high pass filter. Let's do that about here. And let's cut out some mud with this one. Now let's go to the compressor and adjust that. Let's make the ratio at four to one with a slower attack and adjust our threshold right here. Now let's go to the second EQ. Let's add some top end using a high shelf. Bring that up. Now let's say we're really happy with this and we want to use this effects chain, all three plugins on some other tracks. We can save this as an effects chain. Just right click over here, go to effects chains and choose right here. Save all effects as chain. Now, if we wanted to, we could just save selected ones. If we just wanted to save the first two, we could select them, right click it, and choose Save Selected Effects as Chain. And that would just save these two as our chain. But save them all. Save all effects as chain. Let's give it a name Acoustic Guitar Effects Chain. And now if we delete these, let's select all three, hit Delete and they're all gone. Now we can right click, go to effects chains and choose load effects chain. That opens up a directory and here's the effects chain we just saved. Double click it and all those effects get loaded. Along with their settings, all the changes we made are intact. The high pass filter, the compression at four to one, and the top end shelving EQ. So all of it was saved with our effects chain. Now we could also load an effects chain by right clicking. Let's delete these and right click over here. Here's our folders, and right here are our effects chains. We only have one saved, but we can choose it from here, and it does the same thing. It adds our plugins with our settings ready to go. Now let's check out our mix window. In our mixer, we can also see our plugins or our effects right over here. We can reorder them from here We could bypass them by holding down Shift and selecting them. See how it changes color? We could deactivate them or put them offline so they don't use any processing. Right down here, offline. And we could see that 
if we open them from here. All the plugins show up, but they're not loaded. But we could load them by hitting this button. And then each one is back online. We could copy our plugins to other tracks. Let's make a new one just by dragging them over. And we could delete them by holding down Alt on the PC, or Option on the Mac, and just clicking them. And then each one gets deleted. Now, one of my favorite features is the ability to rename our effects instances. So if we right click this right here, we could choose this option rename effects instance. And the purpose of this is we can rename our effects based on what they're doing. So with the first EQ, it's a low pass filter. So let's name it that way. And now we see the name right here, making it easy to remember what this plugin is doing. Let's change the compressor to light compress. And we see it here. And this EQ is a top end boost. So let's name that. So now we could look at these plugins and know what they do. High frequency boost is right here, light compression, and low pass filter. And all of that is saved with our effects chain. So let's go back to this and let's resave our effects chain. Right click, save all effects as chain, and name it the same thing. We can replace it. And now we could delete these, add them back in by right clicking, go to our effects chain, and it opens back up with all our plugins, their settings, and our names low pass filter, light compression, and high frequency boost. So it makes it much easier to use this on other tracks. Now we could also adjust our parameters in the track control panel. Let's go to our compressor. One of the things I like to adjust while I'm mixing is the threshold, but I don't want to have to go and open the plugin every time I want to do that. Got to go over here, choose it, and then go to our threshold and readjust it. A more efficient thing to do is to add this control to our track control panel. So what we want to do is touch this. So it's the last touch thing. Go to parameter, see what says last touched threshold, and then choose show and track controls. And then it shows up right over here. So even with this closed, we can adjust the threshold for that compressor right from here. And just so you can see it over here, watch. Moving it moves it in both places. It's the same thing. Let's do that again for a low pass filter. If we want to adjust the frequency right over here, just touch it, go to parameter, show and track controls. And there it is right here. And we can do the same thing right here. High frequency boost, touch the control right here for the gain, show and track controls, and we can adjust it from here. Now we could also drag and drop our effects to duplicate them. We'll put them on a different track. Let's make a new track over here. If we grab this one and drop it over here, this track now has this plugin. High frequency boost with the setting and the extra knob over here. Let's do it again with our compressor. Just drop it over here, anywhere on the track, and it's copied to that track with the preset and the name. Now, one more thing I want to show you with effects. Let's delete these over here. All the effects I've been showing you, the track effects, happen after the audio is recorded. It's not being recorded onto the track that way. 
So everything over here can still be readjusted after we record because it's not printing the effects. But we can do that. Let's delete these again. If we go over here, this button is for input effects. So if we open it up here, we get the same dialogue, same filters, same folders. But the difference is these are input effects. So if we add the chain over here, all these plugins and presets are going to be printed as a recording. So we can't undo them afterwards, but it does save CPU. So if you know for sure that you want to print the effects as you're recording, we can do it from here, the input effects. See how it's green? Letting us know there's plugins on the input effects. And we can right click and see them. We could delete them from here by holding down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, and they go away. Now, one of the benefits of using input effects is if you're sure you want to print them. Let's say you're using a modulating effect like chorus, flanger, or dynamic filter. Those things change over time. And if you put them on after the fact as a track effect, it may not play back the same every time. So if you put those plugins on over here as an input effect, you're going to hear what's being printed. And that effect will become permanent. So any modulation you're hearing, you know is always going to play back that way. Now, if you want to learn about specific effects and how to route them or how to use them, as I mentioned in the intro, go to Reaper's main website over here and go to videos. And down over here, I go through a whole bunch of them, like compression, EQ, using the gate, reverb, and delay. And there'll be a whole bunch more as time goes on. But in these videos, I go into greater depth on specific effects. So anyway, those are the plugins or effects in Reaper. Let's move on. Mm -hmm.